Andrew Tate was on the Fresh and Fit podcast about a couple weeks ago, and he had a controversial video or a controversial opinion that he's had for a couple years. And the controversial opinion is that depression isn't real. Now, he goes on to qualify that feeling depressed is real, and it's an evolutionary and biological indicator that something needs to change. But he thinks that overall, depression isn't real and that our lives could be much better if we acted as if depression wasn't real. Now, I think, as someone who has been depressed before, I think there's a lot of pragmatic use to having an opinion like Andrew's. Now, before I elaborate, I don't agree with all of the conclusions he draws up until his pragmatic view of helping push people through, because I think for some masculine men in particular, Andrew gives them the kick in the ass that they really need to move forward and to push through. But for other people, hearing someone, hearing him say that could be more like gaslighting for them. And then they shouldn't really listen to Andrew at all. And that's fine, because here's the thing with depression. Everyone's going to be helped by different things. There is no one size fits all approach. And so if someone is going to be helped by Andrew's mindset, I think more power to them, do what's going to help you. But on the other side, if you feel gaslit by Andrew's mindset, don't pay him any attention. It doesn't matter what he thinks anyway in regards to your recovery. Now, here's what I would think about the whole thing. I do think there are chemical imbalances out there, and it makes it very, 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 very difficult to succeed in life when we have those chemical imbalances. But Still, though, pragmatically, his view is correct in the fact that if we feel that way, it's an indicator that we have to do something different. So whether that something different is taking prescription medication or whether that something different is taking supplements, developing a routine, changing things, it still is true that we need to change things, that we must try different things and we must find something, a routine that works for us. Maybe for some people, all it takes is a better exercise and diet. Maybe it all it takes is getting a good night's sleep. For some people, that's true. For other people, it's not going to be true. For other people, they can take supplements like myself. And I take a bunch, but it absolutely helps me. And I know it makes a difference in my life. Because there is, there is a chemical component sometimes. Not all the time. Sometimes there is more situational depression. Sometimes there is more, we must just do something different besides that. Absolutely. And if not those things, it's like, yeah, go to therapy, talk, talk, and take, try different prescription medications with a psychiatrist's help. Whatever it is, I don't care as long as it works. But Andrew also goes on to talk about how, basically, when he said that depression isn't real. He said all sorts of people came to depression to depression's defense and was like, it is so real, you don't understand. And here's the thing about that. Like, I get it, it seems like gaslighting to some people, but what we do focus on absolutely expands. So I'm not a fan of people when they're really accentuating how sick they are or they're always pointing to it, oh, I, I can't do this in my life because I'm depressed. I can't do this in my life because I'm anxious. I can't do this in my life because I have a personality disorder. It's like, for a lot of people, a mental illness or a personality disorder, our identities can get wrapped up in that if we're not careful. And for a lot of people, or maybe just some people, it's what they point to as the reason why they don't succeed. It's what they point to why, to why things don't work out for them. And I think, especially in people who have had depression, there is a fear of success in there. There is a fear of responsibility in there too. And it can hamstring people into doing something different to get better. And so we gotta be careful to not be too attached to our diagnoses, if we're indeed diagnosed. And I think a lot of people's identity can get wrapped up in it and they don't know who they would be. If they weren't the depressed person, who would they be? If they weren't the anxious person, who would they be? 
and they're scared. They're scared because they don't know. Because if they didn't have that depression or anxiety holding them back, then they would actually have to go out there in the world. They would have to do better. And for some people, that can be really scary. But I'm here to say, it's okay. It is okay, and it's understandable. I've had this in my own life. And here's the thing, though. When someone like Andrew points out blatantly, and perhaps crudely, that depression isn't real, it does gaslight a lot of people. And if someone's not ready to hear it, it can do them more harm than good. But there are other people that they kind of are ready to hear it, and it actually does help them. And if you read the comments on the videos of the Fresh and Fit podcast that Andrew was on, there's a lot of people on there that were talking about how they've been depressed, they've been suicidal, but listening to Andrew really gave them the kick in the ass they need. And so I say it's great. Anything that helps those kinds of people is great. But if you're the kind of person that maybe you need more acceptance and you need more understanding, then perhaps listening to someone like Andrew is not for you. And you should go get your help elsewhere. But don't try to criticize him for not thinking the same way that you do. Like, who cares? It's like, okay, you believe depression is real. You have a chemical imbalance. Who cares what Andrew Tate thinks? Doesn't affect you at all. Focus on things that will help you. Focus on the people that you relate with and identify with. And what I also appreciate about Andrew's mindset is it pushes people through. Like it doesn't accept the staying stuck part. And a lot of people, I think, get caught up in just needing acceptance, needing understanding. But there's a danger in there. And the danger is that we stay stuck. The danger is we get so much acceptance and understanding, we don't get forced or pushed out of our comfort zones to try something different. Because if nothing changes, nothing changes. And we got to get uncomfortable sometimes in order to get comfortable. These are all true. And I think there comes a point where unconditional positive regard, as Carl Rogers would say, has its limitations because eventually we have to get uncomfortable. And I think this is a lot of things that goes wrong with society in general, where you have helicopter parents, snowplow parents, they try to solve all their problems for their kids. But it's like, that's not always the right thing to do. It's... You got, there's growth in the uncomfortability of tackling new things. There's growth in the uncomfortability of like getting, being hurt and having to overcome obstacles. Like that's valuable. And especially when we're depressed, like we got to be really, 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 really honest with ourselves. If we have depression and anxious, it's like, am I talking to the part of myself that wants the best for me? Or am I talking to the part of myself that wants to fail, that wants to see me do poorly. Because don't get it twisted. I think, especially when mental illness is involved, there can be a big part of people that doesn't want to succeed. They have a self-sabotaging mechanism. And that part could be screaming when we're trying to help someone push through. When we're trying to talk to the side of a person that wants the best for themselves, the part that doesn't want the best is screaming and angry and furious, but that's okay. That side should be screaming and angry and furious if we actually want what's best for ourselves and we allow ourselves to push through. And so it's a tricky thing navigating how to help people with anxiety, depression, mental illness, because there is no one size fits all approach. What helps one person may not help the next person. And what really helps one person may really piss off another person. And so it's like, take what you like and leave the rest. I think Andrew's mindset is very pragmatic for certain people, especially some men and maybe even some more masculine women. Like they, it's a kind of like a no tolerance approach where low on the understanding and empathy, but high in the pragmatism and high on the, the get shit done scale. And hey, some people, that's exactly what they need to hear. That's exactly what helps them the most. For other people that have the chemical imbalance, and like that's what they have, they might feel gaslit by Andrew's message, but it's like, if you know you're the person that has a chemical imbalance, 
there's still parts of Andrew's message that could be helpful to you, which is do something about it. Try out different medications. Try out different supplements. Tinker with your sleep, diet, and exercise routine. It's like one thing is for sure. If what we're doing is not working, we must try something different. And that's where the acceptance and understanding piece has its limits. Because if what we're doing is not working, a change is in order. That is always true. And so that's what we need to do. We got to be trying new things, try different things. And that's what's going to help us. So again, whatever helps people is what helps people. I think Andrew could really help some people. Other people should just, they'd rather should just ignore him because it's not going to help them. The last thing Andrew says, which was also interesting is, be careful whose mindsets and thought patterns that you follow. And he said, don't adapt the thinking of a sad person or an unhappy person or a negative person. And I actually agree with that. It's like, if someone's happy, those are the people's mindset that you probably should be trying to copy. It's like, if that person's happy, that person's successful, they seem well adjusted in life, that seems like a good person to try to imitate. And imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, sure, but like, Successful people, happy people, they leave clues. And we should be trying to learn from them. And they probably have some things going right in their lives. But someone who's severely depressed all the time, extremely unhappy, not to say that everything they say is wrong, but their thinking and their actions kind of got them to where they are. So it should probably be a warning. Like, be careful, because what they did got them to where they are. And they should probably try to do something different because we have to believe that there is a way to change. We have to believe that regardless of our ailment, there is a way to get better. And I'm not saying you're gonna get better on your own, but there are tools out there to help us get better, whether it's medicines, supplements, sleep, diet, exercise, community, spirituality, religion, prayer, whatever it is, meditation, yoga, we have to believe there's a way. And I won't tolerate it in my own life anymore thinking there's not a way. Because when I was super depressed, if someone were to follow my habits and my thought processes, it probably wouldn't have gotten them anywhere good. But when we get to a better place with our lives, we're more happy, we're more successful, we're more well-adjusted, we have solid boundaries, those are the kinds of people to learn from. So he says, don't imitate the thinking of a sad person. And that could really upset some people. That could annoy some people. But ultimately, I think he's more right about that than he is wrong. So if you saw this episode of Fresh and Fit, or you saw this clip of Andrew Tate talking about how depression isn't real, I'd love your thoughts on this. Comment below on what you think. Did you agree? Did you disagree? Do you think he's harming more people than he's hurting? Do you think if he's helping some people, that's great? And everyone else should just ignore him if, if they're not being helped by him. Whatever it is. And also, I didn't say my spiel in the beginning, but this is Radical Self-Respect with Jared Mello. Please do like, comment, share, subscribe if you're interested in videos about Radical Self-Respect. And I have an ebook and an audiobook by the same name. So I narrate the audiobook. It helps people that have struggled with people-pleasing, codependency. Uh, becoming more assertive or just had a bad breakup. Those are all the kinds of people that can be helped by my video. So with that, thank you very much for watching and have a great rest of your day.